Yes, that's nice. Now, where is it? it must be in here somewhere. <laughs> What are you looking for? Alice Springs. Does she? Not she. Alice Springs is a town in Australia. That's what today's show's about. What, Australia or Alice? Australia? We're going to celebrate Australia's bicentennial in a bit. Bicentennial in a bit? Yeah. Do you know, it's just over 200 years ago that Australia was discovered. Is it? Yes. A ship called uh, something or other mm. set sail from um, England mm. under Captain... Uh, what was his name? Hook. That's right. Hook? Yeah. Didn't he go after Peter Pan? That's right. He was looking for Peter Pan and he accidentally found Australia. Oh. What about Cook? Oh, they didn't need one. They took sandwiches. say in Australia, good day, mate. Now, this is very appropriate, as today's programme is all about... Wallabies. One tea and two sugars, please. No, I brought you wallaby. Oh, hello, Kylie. Nice to see you. Well, if you'd just like to sit over here, and I'll be with you in a minute. Now, don't worry yourself. Now, I've been into the library, and I've found out some amazing facts and figures about Australia. Come on. All right. Well, here in the library, I've found out some pretty amazing things. And later in the programme, I can promise you an Australian revelation. Australian revolution? I've never heard of that. Not revolution, revelation. It means I'm going to tell everybody something that nobody knows about Australia. Cool, what is it? Oh, I can't tell you now, it's a surprise. Oh, I love surprises. Yes. Now, Australia was first colonised by Britain in... in... Uh, instead of Russia, because... It's much warmer. Because it's much warmer. In fact, most of Australia is just desert. Which means that early British settlers got there... Just desserts? ...got there and found they couldn't farm the land. Oh. Which meant they had to live on little insects such as crickets. This soon became a national occupation and they soon had an international cricket team. Which leads us neatly into our next item, the Australia's Cup. Right now, the McTuckle brothers are talking via satellite to our Tucklevision reporters down under. Hey, Paul, what about Ayers Rock? Oh, don't worry about that. We'll come to it a bit later on. OK. I see you, I know, I know, I see you. Hey, do you mind, Cobber? All the blood's rushing to our head here. Ah, to the heat. Ah, it's upside down. Hey, we're going to ruin, eh? Oh, I see you, Cobber. OK, aye, all right, Cobber. Aye, there you are, mate. OK. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. Well, good day. Good day. Now, before we get to the Australia's Cup, let's get one or two things sorted out. Most of you people over there think that just because we're living on the other side of the world, all us Aussies walk around on our heads. Ridiculous. Exactly. Ridiculous. As you can see, over here down under, we're just the same as anywhere else. Yeah. So let's hope that's got that lot sorted out. Yeah. Hey, what about the Australia's Cup? Oh, yeah. The Australia's Cup. Yeah. Here it is. There it is. The Australia's Cup. Yeah. Well, very nice, isn't it? It is very nice. Yeah. Tell you what, mate, yeah. I'm parched. Pour us a drink of milk. OK, Blue. On our heads. That's yeah. ridiculous. Have you got the hats? Yes, they're just over there. Good, go and get them. Right. Now, let's take a look at typical Australian attire. I wish you'd make your mind up. No, no. When I say attire, I don't mean attire, I mean attire. Oh, silly me. Have you got the hat stand? No, I couldn't get a hat stand, but don't worry, I'll do it. Oh, right. Now, early British settlers were convicts and they were sent to Australia for wearing woolly bobble hats. Hence the name, Pom. Yes. Now, Although guilty of wearing silly woolly hats, they did make a valuable contribution to life down under. The hat with the corks. Now, you can see the similarity between the English pom-pom hat and the hat with the corks. They both help keep the flies off your face. Unless you wear your trousers on your head. Both very effective, but with the English pom-pom hat, it also helps keep the suntan off your face. <laughs> hey, it suits you, that. Out in the bush, the typical Australian would wear the hat with the corks with the herder's coat. Oh, I forgot that. Eh? 
What are you doing? I couldn't get a herd. Will one goat do? <sighs> well, now it's time for armchair theatre. Or as they say in Australia, now it's time for armchair theatre. <laughs> hey, what about Ayers Rock? Oh, don't worry. I won't forget Ayers Rock. Oh. Mrs. Philomena Hall's phone rang one breakfast time. Hello, Mrs. Philomena Hall's residence. Crackle, crackle, she heard. Then came a very faint voice. Cousin, Sydney, Australia, Adelaide, I'm arriving. Lunchtime, can I stay? Relatives from foreign climes are particularly welcome. I didn't realise I had a cousin Adelaide in Australia. That'll show the Higgins next door. <laughs> and so she put on her very best pink velour tracksuit and went out and bought a bottle of the finest Cypress Sherry. I can't stop to chat. She said as she passed Mrs Higgins from next door in the street. Mrs Higgins looked startled. Mrs Philomena Hall never stopped to chat to anybody. I have a representative from the Australian branch of the family visiting later. And so she set to about the house. She removed the brightly coloured mugs she usually had her tea in and hid them in the cupboard and got out her very best tea service. She laid out a row of books on the sideboard to give the place a cultured air. And she got a very specially soft roll of pink toilet paper and put it by the loo. She sat down by the dressing table and lined up rouge, lipstick, powder and mascara and three bottles of wrinkle remover. She was going to make quite sure that she looked no older than Cousin Adelaide from Australia when she arrived. Two hours later, she was ready and putting on her highest of heels, she went downstairs. The front doorbell rang and Mrs. Philomena Hall of Penuel Road, Liverpool, went downstairs to greet her long-lost cousin Adelaide from Sydney, Australia. She opened the door and gasped. The person standing on the doorstep certainly wasn't cousin Adelaide. The person standing on the doorstep was a man, grinning from ear to ear and clutching a koala bear. Good eye, Phil. I'm sorry. I'm expecting my cousin from Australia. That's me. You're not my cousin Adelaide from Sydney. Almost. Cousin Sydney from Adelaide. Sydney's the name, Adelaide's the place. Mrs. Philomena Hall quivered from head to foot. And under her makeup, her cheeks went pink. How could she possibly face the Higgins now? <coughs> this is for you, Phil. Carly the koala. <coughs> and he set the koala bear on top of the books that Mrs. Philomena Hall had carefully arranged on the sideboard. Do you take sugar? Five lamps, please, Phil. Say, <coughs> Phil. Say, haven't you got anything bigger? This doesn't look big enough to wet a wallaby's whistle. Mrs. Philomena Hall fetched the mugs from the cupboard. Sidney gulped his tea down in one go and announced, Right then, Phil. <coughs> Are you going to show with the neighbourhood sights? Mrs. Philomena Hall cringed. In the street, Mrs. Philomena Hall cringed again, for there stood the Higgins from next door. Mrs. Philomena Hall wished she could fall down a manhole. Good eye. Super little street you got here. You up to the football match then? Mr. and Mrs. Higgins were decked out with brightly coloured rosettes. Mrs. Philomena Hall wished the ground would open up and swallow her. Isn't soccer sort of rough? You bit, come on. And so Mr. and Mrs. Higgins from next door, Cousin Sydney from Australia, and Mrs. Philomena Hall went to the football match. In the stands, Mr. and Mrs. Higgins from next door and Cousin Sydney from Adelaide were laughing and cheering and joking. And Mrs. Philomena Hall, who could see everything, was quite carried away by the occasion and began to shout in a rather posh voice, you great pudding! He's a very nice gentleman, your cousin Sydney. A very nice gentleman indeed. And so Mrs. Philomena Hall decided that perhaps having cousin Sydney from Adelaide, Australia, staying with her 
wasn't such a bad thing after all. Hey, did you know there are nearly 16 million people live in Australia? Is there? Yeah, and it's a little known fact that if Australians lived in Egypt, they'd be called Egyptians. Would they? Yes. Well, I never. Never what? Never nothing. Quite right, too. Now, the real natives of Australia are called Aborigines, and they live in the outback. There's nobody out back here. No. The outback's the desert part of Australia. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. And the Aborigines are highly superstitious. Are they? Well, for instance, you'd never get one walking under a ladder. Why not? There aren't any ladders. Oh, that explains it then. Another thing that would have impressed Captain Hook were the different forms of wildlife, such as... Crocodile Dundee. He chased him in Peter Pan. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. he did. Now, let's take a look at the different forms of Australian wildlife. Oh! Hey, don't forget Ayers Rock. I won't forget. OK. Yes, Australia is inhabited by many strange creatures. And I've got them all here. Mm -hmm. Kangaroos, possums. The only thing I've not got is a platypus duck. Why not? I couldn't afford the platypus duck bill. Oh. Well, in that case, let's start by taking a look at the wombat. For batting wombs. Yes. Possums. Here's a picture of one. I can't see anything. No, well, they're very shy. Oh. Aren't possums the things they use for chasing bad guys out of town on cowboy films? No, that's a posse, not a possum. I thought a posse was a cat. <gasps> then there's the dingo. An Australian doorbell. Dingo! No, no, a dingo is a wild dog, like a jackal. No, thanks, I had a sandwich earlier on. <sighs> and then there's the koala. A koala bear is a cuddly little creature that lives in trees. Like baby bushes. You mean bush babies, and no, they're not. Oh. Koala bears are timid little creatures, and they live by eating the leaves of gum trees. Does that mean they stick to the diet? Eucalyptus. I never, I just tapped his shoulder. No, they all live in a tree called the eucalyptus. Must be a very big tree. It's quite big. Hey, I've seen eucalyptus oil in the shops. Yeah, they use that to stop the branches creaking. That's very clever. It is very clever. <laughs> and no look at Australian wildlife would be complete without a look at the kangaroo. But who said this look was going to be complete anyway? Hey, Paul, what's this? That's an airline ticket. Is it? Yes. Here on Chucklevision, no expenses spared. And right now, I'm going to fly off to Australia to show you the sights. Can I come? Oh, no, it's far too expensive. Oh, can't I do anything? Yeah, you can pack my bags. Oh, thanks. See you in Sydney. Welcome to a sweltering 180 degrees here out in Australia. And we're sitting outside Sydney's Opera House. And hark, I think I hear from inside the sound of the Australian national anthem. Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours. Hey, Paul, this isn't Australia. You've just walked over from the other side of the studio. Well, nobody will ever know. Hey. Ah, hello, Barry. What? I see you found the ticket I left you, the spare ticket. Yeah, you didn't really think I'd leave you back at home, did you? Um. What about Ayers Rock? Oh, don't worry, I won't forget about it. Oh, good. Now, let's take a trip out to see the Australian bush. Oh, yeah, the bush. <clears throat> and here it is, the Australian bush. Now, this bush has starred in many Australian series and films, such as Flying Doctors, Neighbours, A Country Practice, Emmerdale Farm, The Bush Rangers. The Sound of Bushes? No, music. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're thinking of the other bush, Kate Bush. Kate Bush? Yeah, remember Wuthering Heights? Wasn't that the hotel we stayed at in Morecambe? No, that was Heathcliff next door. Of course it was. He knows. Now, this bush is the home of the red-throated spider. Oh. So you must be very quiet so as not to disturb him. Shh. Is it in here, then? Ah! Oh! <laughs> Another feature of the Australian bush is the billabong. Ah! Here's one now. The old-time prospector would sit here all day and whittle at his boomerang. <whistles> Not whistle, whittle. Oh. He would whittle at his boomerang. Oh, I love meringues. Not meringues, boomerangs. What's that, then? Well, it's like a V-shape made out of wood. Oh. Yes, you can almost imagine the old-time prospector sitting here under the shade of the... <whistles> what are you doing? I'm making a boomerang, aren't I? That's not a boomerang. Well, it's V-shaped and made out of wood. Well, throw it away. Well, for I want it. No, if that's a boomerang, it'll come back to you. Throw it away. 
There's no point in throwing it away if you want it to come back to you, eh? There's no way that'll come back to you. There is. I'll put my address on it. Thick as a plank. Not quite. I'll play in some off. Give it to you. Hey! I wanted that. If that's a boomerang, it'll come back to you. But I haven't got my elastic on it yet. It's a boomerang. Back to the studio. Hey, don't forget it is rock. I won't forget, but I've got to do my Australian revelation first. Oh. Oh, you're back already. Well, you'll have to excuse me, because I'm a little bit jet-lagged. But now it's time for Chucklevision's exclusive revelation, as promised, on Australia. God, I've been looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah. We're going to prove conclusively and once and for all, here on Chucklevision... Are you ready for this? I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. ...that Australia yeah. was once joined on to Scotland. Really? How do you make that out? Well, look at the proof. Um, Macaw parrots, for a start. Yes. Yeah, well, Mac's a Scottish name, right? Yes, you're right. Right, yes. now, secondly, where does a Scotsman keep his money? Uh, in a sporran. Yeah, and what's a sporran? Uh, it's a pouch on his kilt. Yes, and where, where does a kangaroo keep its young? In a pouch. Yeah, not a pouch, a sporran. A sporran. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then there's the final bit of evidence. What's that? Well, if you take a map of the world, mm -hmm. here we are, mm -hmm. down here is Australia. Yes. Yes. Now, if you take Australia off the map of the world... Yes. Right. Then you take a map of the British Isles... Yes. ..and you put Australia there... ..you see? Hey, Perfect fit. It is. Conclusive proof, once and for all, here on Tucklevision, that Australia was once joined on to Scotland. Hey, that's brilliant. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. Hey, I think I'll have my breakfast now. Hey, we forgot Ayers Rock. Oh, don't worry. We passed a sweet shop on the way home. I'll buy you some then. But don't eat it all at once. You might get sick. Oh.